everybody and welcome to a different view for chess and psychology um, I remember we had this um, this view when we started this class and then we moved it up moved it down moved it to Pichy's place and we're back here so hopefully we'll keep moving it around or we can have a fun pet the cat segment <laughs> bring in the Pichy see how many viewers will come for the cats all right, so uh, as we all know, right now the World Cup's going on, so we got a bunch of um, these super GMs trying to win a lot of money and get into candidates. And if I'm not mistaken, uh, this is the first World Cup for women that's going to have the same format as for men. So usually for men, like the winner, uh, I think the, the final four or eight, I think it's four usually gets selected to play in the candidate and then the winner of that gets to challenge Magnus. It's four, right? I thought it was the final two. And then the others Oops. follow... You're the, just talking about the World Cup, right? Yeah, yeah. It could be two. Time. I could be hopeful over here. Uh, but yeah, so a bunch of them, four to something, gets <laughs> qualified. They, they, they get to um, play uh, the candidates and then they're they want to do the same for women which i think is kind of cool because before that women always had like two different world champions so we were like well who is the queen now so yeah now it's getting a little bit more cohesive all right so for today um we're gonna take a quick look at a game between Aryantari and firuzja so they're both like persian blood so i think it's fun but i again please correct me because i have my facts but i'm always wobbly on them there's so many facts up here. Um, I, I'm pretty sure Firuz just switched flags to French recently, officially. Because I know the US kind of wanted him for a while, and then I, well, I guess that didn't happen. But yeah, so I know he's living there, so it's kind of good to see he finally has a flag that he's proud to represent. And Orientari is also uh, Norwegian. He's always been Norwegian. But all right, so uh, one more tiny fact. <laughs> This is from the, the, the game that I'm going to show you is analysis by my brother, Borna, who is going to play a tournament soon as he's pretty panicked about it. But um, he did the analysis for the book that we wrote together. So this is from a chapter, uh, ergo the name of the title here, Turn Water Into Wine. I'm not a big fan of wine, but people like it. So, All right. So um, this was a very fun game because I also think that Karbukan opening is so weirdly cool. I played it only a few times. Why is it showing arrows? I do. No arrows. How do I stop the arrows here? Arrow, use, no, no, I don't want the evaluation. Ah, oh, there we go. I enabled the whole thing. There we go. Lovely. No more hints. Uh, yeah, so I think it's very interesting because when I played Karakan, I only played it a few times and it, I got destroyed. How did it go for you? My. Uh, I've never played it. You've never played Karakan? Yeah, it's so weird. Uh, like sometimes if I, if I have a, um, yeah, if I have a good uh, like repertoire and I know like what's going to happen, that's fine, but I remember in the game that I played, I got completely <laughs> destroyed. The one only federated Karakan that I played. Um, then yeah, it was like I died. My king was in the middle of the center. I couldn't get my bishops out. Ah. All right. Oh, PC waiting behind the window. That sounds quite accurate. Yeah, he does that when I'm not in the room. All right. So um, this was yeah. Uh, so I just kind of wanted to get a little bit more info on how you guys feel about Karokan. So my neck is going to keep turning back and forth. <laughs> no, it's not about you. Like I have to look at this and the camera is there, but my chat is over here. <laughs> so you're Stop. good. Yeah, it's hmm, my neck workout. Yeah, I agree. It's kind of solid, but um, <laughs> oh god <coughs> whoops no nah, i got over excited about karakan all right whoa let's just keep going i shouldn't talk about karakan this much karakan is not meant for this much discussion so um 
we're finally getting to one of the main positions. What I wanted to mention before I got here was that I play like this weird little knight d2 idea that I would like you take, I take, and I don't want to make the center as clear as when in this game happened. So I just wanted to uh, point out that um, that's something you guys can just consider exactly. I'll start choking on Karakans. Maybe we should change the title. <coughs> All right, so. <laughs> <laughs> so that's kind of where we landed here. So I just want to like, get a super quick basic idea of how do you think we should develop? Which pieces are going where? I don't play this often as black. I actually barely play this as black. So yes, Mimi, it is Karakan. Hello. This is not a game from the World Cup because... Um, if you've seen me stream before, I purposefully ignore the games of the week <laughs> because I find it that every single streamer and every single like instructor with the online is usually just talking about that events going on. So I tried to go a few years back and pull the <coughs> full game. Something to G5. Ah, uh, so. Uh, so the, the, the biggest problem with like the Karakan French stuff is this this bishop, right? So if this bishop currently is not under much problem and it has an open file, open diagonal, bishop don't need open files, then we should be using that. So what do you think the move should be? And for those of you who know the opening, good for you. Everybody should know the main lines of every opening just for like the first 10 moves. That's something that, uh, rest in peace. Alois Kavinis used to say that if you want to be a good chess player, you gotta know the main lines of every like every opening for like the first ten moves to just know how the pieces get out. So I agree that uh, we so we want to get this bishop out, and then we want to get this that. Oh, I miss my mouse, and then we want to get this diagonal. So we gotta get this bishop out so we can then play e6 and get this stuff in the diagonal. So knowing that, let's just go ahead. Yeah, so um, we definitely do want to strengthen this pawn as well. And um, it's a better idea to just have your bishop out rather than trying to figure out... Oh yay, mouse. Thank you. Rather than trying to figure out where do I put this? Oh, there we go. Yeah. I think so. Yes, and it works. Perfect. I don't envy your job. Too many cables to set up. <laughs> yeah. All right. I completely like this. So. Bishop g4 idea, and now should white try to do the same thing with queen c2, or is b3 the square to go for the queen? <laughs> Mouse, Pishi would be jealous. Now, Pishi has been feeling a little weird in the last day or two, doesn't want to play as much. So, what do you guys think? Um, yeah, exactly. Queen b3 is the better one. Queen c2 is definitely possible too, but queen c2, you're not really threatening anything, and I would simply just bring this knight out and just follow normally, like get the rook rolling, get the rook rolling, get there. And like black has such an easy development. So yeah, let's continue. But the reason that I don't play this line as white, there's nothing wrong with this line, but I like to make my opponent as miserable as possible. And right now black just has a very easy development and I don't like that about it. So like it's black has a very easy time finding squares or his pieces. 
Whereas in like the knight d2, knight c3 lines, when the knight is on e4, it's a little bit more complicated. But again, this is in high level chess, so everybody knows like everything about the theory. So that's um, not that this is a trickier opponent in the opening as I like to do. So, um, Mimi, I'm not sure why are you so fixated on g5. Even if it's like h6, g5, I don't get it. You were you planning to, what are you going to do with your king? So let me ask you, uh, how do we like the knight d7 idea? What do you guys think about this? Yeah, I agree. A little bit risky because the main thing to answer is what if I lose this pawn? Then what would you do? <coughs> I mean, I agree. I kind of like queen c7 more too. Yeah, exactly. Hold on. What do you think we should do here? Uh, just, just e6, I think. Well, a little, you're a little short. Huh? You're a little short. Oh, well, we should play e5? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So e5 is the best one, and the idea is after take, I take, and I have some counter, I mean, black has good piece activity, but uh, it's hard to um, feel great about your position, because for example, right now, this, this move doesn't work, you just lose the other pawn, and if you bring the other knight, it's still not great, because you just, you, you just went, you just, got your knight activated so if you have to come back it doesn't really um, make as much sense yeah for a price of the pawn I would want more honestly so yeah I wouldn't give this pawn up but if you're playing blitz and if you want to make Karokan all spicy and sharp I guess that's one way to do it but I like queen c7 more uh, Arya and you went for h3 let's get the bishop back in this place now tell me why not bishop h5 Bishop H5 is not necessarily a bad move, but why do you think uh, it's not as pleasant? Ah, no, stop showing me no. Bad mouse. Ah, uh, oh, this works better. There we go. I think why you can play G4. Yeah, G4 is a. Yep. G4 is a little concerning because after G4, you gotta move the bishop and take, you would have to take with H, then it's just a little like extra unnecessary unpleasantness. And it's not like you're losing right now, but it's just why would you make the game inconvenient? So we don't want that. We want to be able to keep the game spicy. So now, is it time to give up on this bishop and play e6, or can we try to let it breathe a little longer? I mean, I agree with you. At some point, you're going to have to play e6 and get the other bishop out, but we still seem to have a little bit of time. Oh, tell I said hi. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Chess Bonzo is here. <laughs> in person so I want you here next I gotta see these people that I've been talking to for a year year and a half maybe yeah, yeah. it's a longer trip for him oh where, where is he Germany oh oh he's awake at that time in Germany oh 
Hi, Manny. Said hi. Why not bishop c8 to guard the pawn? Well, we still want to keep this bishop somewhat active because so uh, a very tiny but fun thing that people usually forget is that you don't just develop the bishops for the sake of the bishop. You develop them for the sake of the rook that's stuck behind them. So if your bishop could just stand c8 and your rook was still active, yeah, sure, why not? Your bishop is holding the two different diagonals. It's not necessarily super, but it works. So bishop on d7, uh, if your rook was like more active i could go get behind bishop on c8 yeah oh i many thank you yeah so knight f3 knight c6 makes the most sense why because yeah you're gonna have to play e6 but at the same time if you can choose between e6 or knight c6 you know for sure your knight's gonna go to c6 you're never gonna like do knight a6 or knight d7 in this position so might as well do the knight c6 you might also give your opponent the illusion that you want to do e5 you might want to do e5 but after castle that kind of goes away because e5 now there are you know these super problems here that you shouldn't have to deal with you know pins are not fun yeah but if, for example, instead of castling, let's see, our opponents played, I'm going to do a weird move. So we do a weird move. Now could you do e5? Yeah, I like it. We also have a different threat. Yeah, I mean, it's, again, it's going to be isolated pawns and still a lot of hassles, but it's worth it. Two bishops, open center. I like it. All right, so if castle now e5 is no longer valid, so we'll just go with e6 and get the other bishop in a good position and here Aryan played a novelty we're just on move 11 and this is a very normal position but this is a novelty which is very mind-blowing when you think about how big chess land is and um, from what my brother said he assumed a lot and that uh, Aryan Tari had like prepared this before the game so do you think black or Aliriza is gonna get into any trouble or is everything safe and sound uh troy boy it is live if you are in st louis run run make it here because then they're gonna analyze your games bring a game exactly bring a game <laughs> All right, yeah, so now the big question, oh, the big question is should we cast though? Well, Troy boy, go play one. Go on Leech Us, play a bunch of games, save them up. We usually have game analysis after this. So that's the thing. Oh, careful, because your knight is also protecting over here and the rook is also pinning. So something like knight h5 does not really um, work. So... A lot of errors. Uh, yeah, knight h5 doesn't work. Queen d5 and this is just a free pawn. So the options you have are between castling and... Honestly, I'm not sure. Maybe relocating a knight somewhere? That, I don't think that works any magic either. Because if you look at it from a different perspective, this queen over here, what is this queen doing? Just attacking these two pawns, right? But those, of the, those pawns are long-term defended. So white's queen would soon want to relocate somewhere else anyway. So if you play knight a5 and you push your knight to a, a not very pleasant position then the queen can just go back and that's also not something you, you didn't do any harm to your opponent's position so why would you do that all righty so um, why not long cast though good question chess bonzo do you want to take this one why not long cast though Fair point. Worried about C file. Uh, 
Yeah, Aquinas already on this side, yeah. Um, I guess the other way to think about it is uh, bl white, uh, yeah, white pieces are more ready, so white could simply just go like knight a3 and is trying to already create some uh, discomfort for our king. Well, not just the king, for our pieces. And your pieces are just very disorganized because you, you're gonna have to spend next few moves figuring out how to stabilize your queen side. While you do that, uh, white is just gonna move the queen, start pushing pawns, and you're not gonna get a chance to attack his um, king side. So yeah, long castle, I wouldn't really recommend it. Your king would still be weak and there are no clear weaknesses. Now, tell me, why don't we like castle? What's wrong with castling? Are we worried about take? Because if take, we just take back. And there are no attacks currently happening. So I always have a 5. Now I might even have e5. But very cautious about e5, as I was just saying. And I could just easily shift everything the other side. Aww. Kajin guy, how did you how do you know? Uh sorry, bishop e7 doesn't uh, also it's not really that optimal. You just went bishop d6 like two moves ago. Wait, actually last move. Yeah. You just played bishop d6. Literally right now. Bishop d6, why would you come back? That's just yeah. Mm. Castling is indeed the best one, and taking is not something to be concerned about. It's a bishop pair, your king is not that weak, it's just like, and opponent's king is also going to have uh, issues. It's not like the king, opponent's king is super safe as well. We can just work on the open g file. So in the game, Aryan just went for knight d2. Alright, so now I think this is the first critical position in the game. We have a decent middle game and we have to decide between a bunch of plans and for me that has always been the most painful thing about chess. Just deciding which 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 route, route to take. And I, I, I see that there are a lot of head noddings like ah yes me too. So Maybe uh, h6 any good? Uh, cast, I, I don't, well castle was a novelty but only because bishop g5 was a novelty. So after bishop g5, every move after that is going to be a novelty. So... <laughs> we have a very confident person in the chat. It's good. Pushing e pawn could be interesting, but if you are if you're uncomfortable with the idea of take, then you should change something about it. So what was so let's just go one move back right now. Why couldn't we move this knight? If we move this knight, this pawn would fall, right? So can I move this knight now? I like the idea of doing stuff in the queen side, but first I think we need to stabilize our king side a little. And this is kind of funny um, because I think Mimi was the one who kept talking about something in the G file. And yeah, that's maybe later in a few moves we can revisit the G pawn subject. So. What do you guys think? What should we do now? Yeah. Uh, what about you, Mr. Or uh, Tracy? Anybody? Uh, I still can't decide. Um, it's okay. Maybe. I'm 
wondering about like 98 and F6, but I'm a little, I think it might be too risky. Why 98? Why not, not H5? Yeah, the right idea on oh, F6, that, oh, yeah. That's right. Our, our, I was like worried about the knight getting stuck, but it won't get, it can go to yeah. F4. Or yeah, knight h5 is the easy, the best one, especially because if I get this knight to f4, then there's going to be different problems for your bishops. You have to choose between one of them. Um, so white played queen d1. Now, black to move, what do we do? Knight f4 is definitely something we should consider, but do we want knight f4 now, or do we want to do some other move to provoke some of white's pieces first. Yeah, I gave the move out. Uh, there was a concern about move g3. I really, really want to take it but I can also first attack this. You move it away. Uh, this knight I need to start protecting. I don't know if I should take it. Let's see. I mean, I know I have perpetual, but I don't know if I actually want perpetual. I don't think our pieces are ready. Like if I, my bishop could jump, yeah, I'd do it. But I don't. My, my pieces are not ready, and I'm sure engine can find something with like taking over here. Maybe then king moves and move a bunch of knights around. And I see king is shit. I, 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 but this is not human. I wouldn't do that over the board. Because right now I feel like this g3 is giving me a different weakness on f4. So. This is, I agree that g3 is a weakness. Now, how can we attack it? We don't want to take it just yet, but how can we bring more pressure to it? Yeah, James, you're correct. F5. And you're going to continue with F4. And the idea is that this is the weakness. We're going to go poke at it. And eventually, we're going to eat it. But we don't want to waste the whole bishop on it. So that's why G3 is not a good idea. So queen d1. <coughs> I see a lot of F6 in the chat. Uh, what, do we, what do we think? F6, yay, nay? Oh, thank you, GGRR. You should come visit. Everybody should come visit. Is this game from Tata still? No, I think this is the Norway. Yeah, this is Norway chess. Uh, I like F6 ball. Like yeah, ball. exactly. F6 it is. And now, the other question. Are we ready for E5? Keep thinking, why did white bring the queen back? Yep, exactly. So tell me, what's wrong with e5? Uh, pawn takes, pawn takes, knight takes, if both uh, discovered it. Just pawn. start with knight. Oh. Yeah. If you take, just now the queen takes, there's a nice checkmate threat Whoa. around here. And this is another issue. Yeah. So you're not ready for e5 just yet. So let's go knight f4. And now we are forcing white to kind of deal with this knight. Either you're going to take it and give up this bishop, or you're going to have to move this bishop, which makes it even more unpleasant. Bishop c2 is possible, but um, 
it's you know your pieces are very disorganized if you just have one bishop here that looks good but it doesn't have any support uh, i don't really see how that's beneficial whereas if you do like bishop f1 you might be able to do like g3 bishop g2 relocate your pieces but just looking at last three moves you pushed your queen back then you pushed your bishop back then you pushed your other bishop back so psychologically you're in a defensive mood because you're just putting everything back and back and back and black is a, a little attack over here a little attack over here just little by little all right so black to move what do we think we should do what do you think we should do My skin is glowing. Seriously, I started a new um, sunscreen. I don't usually do sunscreen. Oh boy, it feels weird. So that's the thing. Are we ready for e5? Just because we have two bishop doesn't mean we should open up the center. Keep in mind, opponent also has two bishops. Whoa, knight is three sacrificed? No, not, not, not ready for it yet. Oh, Moda. I like what I see. Um, I would have to say a huge no to knight takes h3. If you wanted to play a chill move and just bring the other rook to like d8 or d8, that's perfectly fine too. But between something like e5, I'm a little skeptical on e5. Mm, does anybody want to tell me why I don't like, why e5 is not a good idea? So what do you guys think? What's wrong with e5? Yeah, exactly. Double pawn. Take, take. Now this is also a huge weakness. You also closed up your own bishop. That's just the definition of, oh boy, no. Yeah, we don't want this. Mm -mm. Now white is the one who is bringing back the attack. Yeah, no. Not, not this. All right, so we want to be able to take control of our center, but not to, not with this price. All right, so that's a no to e5. That's a no to knight is three. That's a maybe to bring up your rook. What else you got? Um, knight g6. I, I'm, I'm a little hesitant. You still want to e5? Knight, okay. Yeah, yeah. Um. So what was the problem of e5? Bishop takes f4. So your solution is to move the knight. There is another option instead of moving the knight. Bring another defender for the knight. Oh, should we reroute the other knight to g6? Or I think like that's also possible, but g5. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so how do we feel about g5? Let's take, a, let's take a second to look at this. How do we like this? Okay, there's a question, what is that knight doing on f4? It's taking up space. It's knowing the opponent. I don't yeah. Mind opening the g yeah, yeah, opening a g file is not a bad idea. Ah, smiley face. Also, your pawns are smiling, apparently. Ah, I see that now. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's another reason. Right? Yeah, it's a good reason. 
All right, so G5, what worries you the most from white? What do you think white can do to that kind of worries you? Because if there's nothing that white can do that worries you, then you should have done G5 five minutes ago. Ah, courage, I seem, it seems like the courage might be the issue. Okay, so I don't really see anything um, that's scary in the chat. Something about h4, but h4, what if I just do g4? And then you gotta move this knight, and then this diagonal is mine, and no, this is just too cool. So what worries you from g5? I'll try, let me see, how can I turn a hint without giving a move? Ah! Um, so when we're doing like a uh, king side or queen side attack, we're not attacking in the center, we usually want the center to be closed up because we don't want the opponent to do anything in the center to us. Having said that, if now we're doing something in the king side, can the opponent do anything in the center? Yep, c4 is the, the idea. If you don't do c4, what else are you gonna do? I mean, yeah, technically you could like try for maybe b4, maybe get get the rook here, but my my ideas are much more dangerous than yours. So you gotta do the c4. You gotta create some sort of um, counterplay, and you gotta make black somewhat uncomfortable. So let's continue with the plan. Let's move the king along. Let's just move the rook to this side, and here white made a mistake. White has a nice uh, opportunity for counterplay in the queen side by like trying to push these pawns and just get something done on the, on the queen side, but white messed up a little, and white is a strong grandmaster, 26 plus. So white just took over here. Now, we have to decide, do we want to take this with the pawn or with the bishop? Should be a relatively easy choice. Um, I'm on my pick for the World Cup. I live in St. Louis. There are three people who live in St. Louis that are playing there. So, for Women's World Cup, my pick is Stavrula because she's my roommate. If I say anything else, I don't think she'll let me live for next year. <laughs> Um, but my pick for male, I would say it's between Fabi, Dominguez, or the newest edition of St. Louis, Aronian. One of these three. Whoever wins, I'll be happy. As long as it's one of these three. I'm not sure. I mean, their super tournament is going to start soon, so it makes the most sense that he would move around that time. So. Oh, we got someone rooting for Anish. Interesting. Very strong. Oh, I think he's having his second baby soon. Why do I know this stuff? I like babies. They're tiny and cute when they're not mine. All right, so which one are we going to take this with? I kind of agree. Taking with bishop makes the most sense. Because if you're going to take with the pawn, then what are you going to do with your bishop, right? So take, I mean, again, there's like a trade-off. If you take with the pawn, you have the, this, um, file opening up and you could consider getting this bishop active but it means that this bishop will be blind so I kind of like taking the other bishop and yeah that's what I thought like probably more like um, intermediate people uh, players would prefer to take with the pawn because you op immediately open up the g file but 
that's not that shouldn't be the concern because then the, now the king can just move and even if you try to double up your pawns are ugly your opponent gets a lot of um, new ideas and i don't like happy opponents seriously i don't all right so we take with bishop pawn jumps now what do we do this move had me a little tripping i'm not entirely it's not the first move i thought about but it makes perfect sense the first move i want to do is i want to eat the pawn but we can't really do that because then attacking my queen and then i gotta move the queen and white pieces gets active pretty instantly so we don't want to take that just yet but we know why don't we want to take it we don't want to take it because this pawn will fall so how can i try to um avoid that we identified the problem and what's the solution while well, you guys think i'm gonna share a little bit of a story about um when I, I just remembered this that one of the things i was i was so excited about like chess going back to in person and then i remembered one of the things that i hated when i was playing chess was the sound of people's shoes when i'm like deep in concentration and somebody who's like very good they like sneakers and it sounds like creak how do you say like creaky or like yeah squeaky or like heels and tuck 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 <sighs> yes something like that no like that's that and like a little bit of that is fine but yeah i just yeah i started thinking about how cool it would be chess is going back to in person again and <laughs> yeah what else was those yeah i always had like these one or two opponents who like mm, drop their pants super loud or, like bang the clock too and yeah. i learned that if i bang it harder they'll stop doing it <laughs> but yeah not my most favorite oh coughing i mean yeah it's also when you're yeah when you're like in deep focus any kind of sound just makes you want to punch stuff so I guess that's why they always make it like the air conditioner going super loud. <laughs> Anyways. All right, so what do you think? Yeah, okay, so I see a lot of like B5 ideas. Imani, you are correct. Ah. Uh, no, you can't have any kind of electronics, AirPods or otherwise. Actually, I don't know if you're like a cochlear implant i don't know about that but that would be tricky i've actually never had to deal with a case like that but that's the question for arbiter if you have like a cochlear implant because that's a medical device but i don't know all right uh, what do you think black should do so we took a tiny break talking about tournament in person what do you think black should do now We, I mean, we eventually want to be able to do g4 and stuff, but yeah, we gotta move the queen because the queen is the problem, right? Because the, the rook is in front of my queen, so let's move this queen. Yeah, this wasn't the first one that I considered, but kind of got there. So queen d6, b5, let's move this knight, and c5 was another inaccuracy. Um, c5 doesn't feel like an inaccuracy. It's like one of those weird moves that you you think it can't be wrong because you're advancing your pawns you're taking up space you're actually making something out of the queen side but the problem is you also close up a center the center is no longer um a problem for black so now i can focus on your king side better after i save my queen so instead of c5 the, i'll give you guys 30 seconds what do you think is a better move if not c5 That door is never open. Security check. Ah, to make sure that door is never open. Ah. <laughs> but I've never seen that door open, ever. It's been open. When? Random time. <laughs> okay. 
Um, not necessarily. CD5 is also quite early because you just take with the pawn, there's no real threat. So you just open up opponent's bishop. We want to keep the tension, we don't want to resolve it. A4, I think A4 is actually interesting, but then what do you do after G4? Yeah, I don't really like um, letting my opponent just ride on the king side. So what else? How about white plays g4? Uh, what if I just play like h5? No, something like that doesn't really work. You can't just... When your king is under attack, you, you need to have more pieces to defend. You, you shouldn't help your opponent to open it up. So your game is in the queen side. You have advantage on the queen side. But how can you use the space that you've gained in the queen side to help cover up some of your king side? Rook e2. Interesting, but no. The other problem is this pin. So... Yes. Rook C3. Yes, yes, yeah, rook c3 makes the most sense. And it's not like white's having advantage, but white is kind of getting some space back and resolving some of the threats. Now if you try to play g4, boom, boom, now you can even consider something cool like knight e5. Because now this is a, th this is a threat. And um, yeah, so this is something that black still has advantage, but white has a better fight. White has more chances. And like for example, right now bishop e1, will white will win. Can you tell me how will white win here if bishop e1? Bishop e1 is a terrible mistake, but... Seven... Uh, yeah, I mean, the gaining space part is a huge part in chess. Because without space, you can't really do anything with your pieces. It's queen h4? Um, no, because now queen h4, you have to deal with, I'll give up this bishop, and then I'll throw in some checks, and I'll save it. You have to be very accurate with your movement here. Black just made a terrible mistake. How can white use it? No, this rook giving up makes no sense. You, you literally have two pieces left. You gotta be way more careful. What else? We gotta, so take, we gotta, you're correct about wanting to bring in a queen, just where? The idea of bishop d3 looks interesting, but what if I just do knight f5 to cover up? Now black is winning. Uh, queen h5. Yeah, exactly, queen h5, nice. And now if you try to run, I'll take, and now c5 to just take, kick your queen away, and this is just, this, this, like, if you reach to this position, you know you're winning. You shouldn't have to worry about too much. This is actually like checkmate in three moves. You, you don't have to see and hear and when you play queen h5, but when you play queen h5, if you see queen h5, if you consider check, okay, I don't have to take it, but I can. Because now, even if you do this rook f8, there is no rook f7 compared to if you played queen h4, and then there was rook, h7, rook f7, right? So we gotta be very careful and accurate about these moves. Anywho, let's go back, back, back. But rook c3, my point being, rook c3 would wi give white the best chance. So white played c5, we moved this away, and white played g3, which was another 
just like inaccuracy and I don't necessarily understand it's like you're daring opponents to want to do stuff to your king side I mean I understand it's a very unpleasant position but something maybe like rook e2 or again maybe rook c3 just try to get your rooks a little more involved because something like g3 now what do we do after this the game is kind of already decided you just have to play accurately the the yeah the uh, the main thing to know is should i take does this work I don't think it's the right time even if it works it's not as pleasant as we want it to be because now white gets to cover up the king with too many little things and that's not what we want not the right time even if we take it's better to play g4 now but if you're gonna play g4 just do it now yeah g4 take uh, if you take over here, that's just purely oops, because we just take with the queen. And if you try to cover up, that's not going to work. Even g3 looks pretty enough. And we take over there. There's one checkmate looking nice. The knight can come over, give another checkmate. This is just pick and choose which piece should mate. Should you should mate you, basically. All right. Um. So g4, take, take. Now this bishop is also safe for the time being. Bishop h3. Now, uh, what do we do now? Again, it's important to decide. Is it time to take over here or do I still need more pieces? <laughs> Pawn mate. That's the one thing probably will take me much longer. I agree, it's not the right time. So let's bring the rook back. I will double up and I will reorganize my pieces to your king soon enough. Uh, knight f1 could also be interesting but you just drop the rook so that's another reason why having the rook um, not under pin would be a better idea so here after king h1 Firuza made an, 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 an inaccuracy the better move here would be finally bishop g3 take we take with the queen and we bring the other knights this would actually work pretty nicely um it has a very nice attack it's not winning winning but it has clear advantage because if you try to take well that's just going to be fun checkmate if you don't try to take then i can just do queen h4 bring this knight black has a lot of opportunities for different attacks so bishop g3 was finally the right time to do it but he missed it he played e5 which still holds a lot of advantage but uh a little questionable keep in mind taking over here does not work simply because you your other bishop is dropping so take take and here Aryan just went knight h2 makes sense because you can't take queen h3 would be quite at the end of the game literally like knight h2 actually let me just show it there we go so uh knight h2 first we still do the same thing to avoid take we still want to give checkmate rook g1 now what do we do now this take could be a problem so do we move the bishop or what Seven, um, could you rephrase the question? I'm a little confused. Yeah, bring up the other rook, lovely. Now if you take over here, well, just rook g2. Knight over here, I can even just play e4. This is way too much pressure. White is like, almost checkmate, like two moves, three moves, this is not gonna hold. Rook to, um, Sorry. Case g1, was that also? now no uh 
I'm oh, sorry. I mean, possible. Yeah, I think that's also. I mean, you there wouldn't be more any checkmates, but yeah, you can also take eat over here, and yeah, it's just a queen versus two pieces. This is this should be good enough for a win, but that's just more powerful. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So queen e2 was played in the game. I don't get queen e2, but there is a lot of back and forth moves in this position that I was just a little, huh? So what do we do? Try to try to uh, figure out what does white want. Because if we can figure out what does the opponent want, then we can block it. Ah, seven. Yeah, that's something that you sh everybody should be more comfortable with. Easy, um, basic checkmate patterns. Because if you miss them, then your game can... That could be the, the difference between winning or not. Happened to me once or twice. Even when I was 2400. <laughs> there was a very nice checkmate idea and about the long diagonal. And it will always haunt me. It was the last round. I was tired. I just wanted to get out of there a little. And I was playing in the Grandmaster. And I had such a beautiful position. I, I believe I've shown that game somewhere in our YouTube channel. But yeah. <sighs> yeah, so opponent wants to get something to F3, so let's go E4. Exactly. Take away any possibility for any any defense. So rook C3. Now let's bring the last piece that's not working. It's not like you're going to take over here because well, that would be a fun checkmate. So now um, white just took over here. Which I'm not so sure why, but then again, this is such a sad position for white. I don't think it honestly um, is going to last that long. So now what do we do? Again, if you just, honestly, if you, I'm kind of curious. If you just wanted to like chill with the bishop back here, you would still have decent advantage. So you don't have to do crazy stuff right now. But what do you think is the best move in the position? It's funny, my, my brother did this game, so he wrote that commentary for this, and he has a very aggressive comment here. <laughs> I don't know if I should say it. So what do we think? Something about no more oxygen left on White's lungs. <laughs> this is a little too dark. <laughs> so what do we think? Almost done. Yeah, take on G3. Yep. And you can't really do much because that would be too pretty. And you could do like rook g2, but then what? How, how, how are you going to defend after here? So now there's a new weakness, your back rank. How can white, how can black use the weak back rank? Um, yeah, Erky7. So there's a question on if you're just continuing here as white, are you just like praying for a blunder? Not necessarily, it could also simply be like you're in disbelief that you got whooped so bad so fast. <laughs> it has happened before, you just continue because you don't realize how bad your position is and you're always hoping, can't be that bad, right? you just like, I'm not like, I'm, I don't feel that lost, I still have some game, but I mean, it's really hard to be objective when the position is this, um, this bad. <laughs> Yeah, so Rehi 7 makes the most sense, Queen B1, and then now what do we do? This is such a... Here, this is the last move of the game, and it's so fun. What do you guys think? Knight H4? I'm sure that also works, <laughs> but... More time. Yeah. Actually, Knight H4, I'm a little worried about Rook takes G3. <laughs> Careful with that. Yeah, I don't <laughs> <laughs> Oops. 
I mean, Nightwish Pro would be nice, but so what is our main checkmate idea right now? A lot of these moves that I'm seeing could work. Oh, maybe not bishop f2. You're going to lose your queen over here. As long as you don't blunder. <laughs> a lot of these moves that I suggest that could work. But what do you think is the main checkmate? What's the easiest checkmate pattern that you can see here? Nobody? So what was our idea here? Why did we play rookie 7? Right. Back rank checkmate, right? So why is defending it? Now how do we... All we gotta do is bring a little bit more... Rookie. Yep, rookie yep, yep, rookie 8 and voila. Yeah, so white resigned here because you can't really stop rookie one. I mean, technically you could take over here. I'll give you that check. You can go back and then I can take it over here. You take there and I take there. Whoa, uh, maybe that's what they were hoping for. <laughs> and then like take over here. And this is just, it's too painful. It's like a full rook at this point. All right, well, yeah, that's all I had for today can you tell us about your book oh yes so uh thanks <laughs> so my brother and i wrote this book called um well the name kept changing but the basic idea is that it's gonna teach you how to the tips and tricks oh thank you and how to unbalance your opponent and we thought the royal jungle would be fun your jungle guide which is also royal because the pishi is also there pishi <laughs> So uh, we, we wrote this over quarantine and it's, uh, it's in, actually it's kind of in print now. So yeah, it'll be out by end of the month, first week of August. So yeah, make sure to look out for it. The Thinking Publisher did a great job just creating this. They drew it, they, they even surprised me with the kitty on it and there'll be another surprise in there too. It's Persian. There'll be some nice recipes, some cool pictures. Yeah, exactly. GM, GM PC judging our game. <laughs> All right, yeah, so that's it. I hope you guys enjoy it. It's um, a lot of our personal games, and it's kind of, it's a, the, we wrote it in the hope of giving more attention in the chess world by kind of giving some hope to the lower rated to, you can be tired too. So yeah. I will see you guys next time. Thank you.